but before we can discuss all the effects in detail I want you guys to draw these two lines right here like this and add the midbrain section the pons and the medulla right there and then fill in the arteries as we discussed in this diagram so you can see that in the midbrain you have the lateral midbrain and the medial midbrain and the lateral aspects and the medial aspects you only have one artery here known as the pca right so you put pca 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 then for pons you have aca coming out from the lateral sides so aca aca and medially you have only basilar so basilar and for the medulla you have pica pica at the lateral sides and in the middle you have the asa which is going right here so the asa comes here so now you have the three sections midbrain pons medulla and all the arteries that are supplying here so now let's add the annoying cranial nerves you guys know the cranial nerve four rule right the four above pons four in in the pons and four in the medulla so three four in the midbrain five six seven eight in the pons and nine ten twelve in the medulla eleven is in the spinal cord so we're going to ignore that now the 3, 6, and 12 are multiples of each other. 3, 2 is a 6, 6, 2 is a 12. So these go in the middle because they are important. They're relatives, I don't know. So 3, 6, 12, right in the middle. And everything else, 5, 7, 8, on the lateral sides of the pons. 9, 10, the lateral side of the medulla. So now that you have your cranial nerves arranged here, what can we infer from this new table? But before we can do anything, I want to point out something. What happens is that the cranial nerve 6 gets really lonely in the medial pons. So what it does is it attracts cranial nerve 7 to itself. So now 7 is being shared between aca and basilar. And seeing that, cranial nerve 5 and 8, they get really mad. So what they do is they go towards the pica, 10 and 9. I mean, 5 to the 10, 8 and 9. So now... Aka and Pika are also sharing 5 and 8, and Aka and Basilar are sharing 6 and 7. I mean, only 7. 7 goes to 6. 6 doesn't go here. So basically, because, you know, 6 is important, it's in red. <laughs> so that's how you can sort of uh, remember the cranial nerve arrangement. So now let's do a question. You get a patient who comes to you and says, I've had some vertigo, decreased sensation on my face, and I've had some you know, problems walking straight and also have some hoarseness in my voice. Now, just based on those symptoms, you can tell me where the lesion is and what artery is involved. Let's see. So vertigo, that means cranial nerve 8. Then decreased sensation of the face, that means cranial nerve 5. So at this point, it can be aca or pica. But then he also has problems with walking, ataxia. So that means cerebellar peduncles are involved. Inferior, probably. But that also can be a car pica. But then he has hoarseness in his voice. So that means it's cranial nerve 10. So that means it's pica. So now the lesion is in the pica and it involves the lateral medulla and the inferior cerebellar peduncles and the cranial nerves 5, 8, 9, and 10. So that's how you can easily solve any question that involves these cranial nerves. You can do another one involving the ACA or the ASA or anything. But before we do more questions, we have to add one more important thing to this chart, and that is the tracts. So now I'm gonna add the three tracts, guys, to our new improved stroke chart. So we have one descending tract and two ascending tracts. The one descending tract is known as the lateral corticospinal tract, and this tract is coming down here, and it decussates at the caudal medulla, right here. So what comes to mind when I say caudal medulla? Yes, the ASA and the cranial nerve 12, the spinal artery and hypoglossal nerve. So if you have a lesion at the ASA, it affects the medial medulla, the hypoglossal nerve, and the descending corticospinal tract. But this tract is running medially. So if you have a lesion in pica, however, it will not get affected. It will not affect the corticospinal tract. Okay, moving down. So we have the ascending tracts now, the dorsal column or medial meniscus and the spinothalamic tract. The dorsal column or the medial lemniscus tract is the one responsible for proprioception, vibration, fine touch, and this decussates in the medulla as well, and then ascend contra contralaterally, the black one. So this also gets affected if you have a lesion in the ASA. 
And this also runs, runs medially, so it does not get affected if you have a lesion in the ACA or PICA or anything. The third one is the spinothalamic tract. This is the pain, temperature, and the crew touch. And this is the best tract because it decussates right down in the spinal cord and just laterally ascends contralaterally. It does not do any, uh, any of this here. So this tract is running laterally. So this tract obviously gets affected if you have a lesion in the ACA or the PICA. But if you have a lesion in the basilar artery or the ASA, it does not affect the spinothalamic tract because it's running laterally. So in the end, if you want to just see the three syndromes that affect the posterior circulation, you can sort of just derive them from this chart here. So now if you have a lateral medullary syndrome, lateral medulla, that means it affects the pica. So lateral medullary is the pica syndrome. And what affects what gets affected in pica? Cranial nerves 5, 8, 9, 10, and also your ascending spinothalamic tracts and your inferior cerebellar peduncles. There's one more thing, however, that is the sympathetic fibers, and they also run along with the spinothalamic tract, so you can sort of remember that too, because they are responsible for producing the Horner syndrome if they get uh, disturbed. So that is another thing, but I think if you have four syndromes out of five, right, you can diagnose the, the location. The next thing would be the medial medullary syndrome. So the medial medullary syndrome affects the ASA. So if you have a damage to the ASA artery, you can get this syndrome. And the, the last one is the lateral pontine syndrome. The lateral pons, that means the syndrome that involves the ACA artery. So if you have anything wrong with ACA, you will also get similar symptoms to PICA, but you will not see facial paralysis in PICA because facial paralysis is responsible, I mean, by spatial paralysis is caused by the damage to the facial nerve 7 that's not involved in pica so this is something that you guys can really use before your exam i would recommend drawing this chart and then practicing a few questions with this and also in your exam you can draw this before your exam and use this back and forth as you please <laughs> and i hope this video was super useful guys let me know if you find something that i should discuss next and thank you so much for watching.